Hey YouTube, this is Cameron again. We're going to be doing a tutorial on how to make cardboard duct tape holsters. These can be used for anything from magazines to weapons to anything else you may have. This is one of our examples. It's Rob's. He uses this to hold his drag blasters. This is not one of mine, but this has been used and well used and well abused. You can see still their durability. Mine are much more aesthetically pleasing. Again, this is still very functional, so you can make it at whatever you want to. You can make it quick or you can make it a little bit more precise, however you want to do it. Okay, so today we're going to be doing a holster for a single 18 round mag. Our materials are duct tape. Again, we want to use duct tape, brand duct tape. We're going to be using cardboard, hot glue gun. I've got a high temp hot glue gun, scissors, box cutter. This is webbing. This is a synthetic strap material. You can see it on backpacks, any kind of bags like that. Um, I got this from Walmart in a six foot roll. I think it was about $2. You can get this from surplus stores, all kinds of other places. You can get it in cloth or synthetic. Either one really works. I prefer the synthetic. And finally, a lighter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my template. This is going to be what we're going to use for this exact pattern. Now, if you want to hold on to this and use this as an extra for future reference and just trace it out again and again and again, you can. I've done that in the past. I'd really recommend that. But if you just want to make a single one for a single function or a kind of an oddball kind of blast that you may not have multiples of, you can just use this one. Now, the trick to this is having a big sheet of continuous cardboard and this is really not the best sheet to be using but we'll make it work so what i want to do is i'm going to center this on one piece now i'm using the lip of the 18 mag to be my stop point and that works really well because it's just going to be its its bottom stop point i'm going to trace out the bottom and the edge now as you can see on the 18 mag it's got that little bump out so we're going to use that as the widest point reference and I'm gonna use the other side to trace my straight line. So we're gonna be leaving about a quarter of an inch every single side around because this is gonna get covered with duct tape on the front and the back. And that's gonna give it just a little bit of wiggle room to accommodate for that, as well as give you a smooth pull. It's not so much that it's gonna be loose, but it's so much that it's gonna be smooth and it'll just be a little bit of an easier experience to use. So I'm gonna bump this over just a hair and make my next line. And the same thing what we did on these sides, we're gonna do on the bottom and give it just a little bit of extra room. Not too much, probably a quarter inch or less. And I'm gonna use my straight line from my mag. Next thing we're gonna do is rotate it and I'm gonna leave just a tiny bit of room on this side and draw my straight line down, same deal on this side. And as you can see, we're running to the edge of the cardboard, but that should be okay. We should have just enough room to make this work on this side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this covering front, side, back, other side, and we're gonna pull the, we're gonna make a fifth side to cover this back end. And that's actually what's gonna give it its, its integrity and its strength. What you can also choose to do at this point is if you wanna pattern it differently, where you're patterning this way, this way, and that way, and you can wanna fold it in the other way, you can totally do that. Um, what I usually do is I just go around these main sides and I'll make a little stop out of duct tape on the bottom. It's a little bit easier to build, but you can definitely do it any way you want. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. So we can see this is almost the perfect length for our magazine. Now the next part's a little bit tricky. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my box cutter, but I'm not gonna go all the way through the cardboard. Instead, I'm just gonna splice it very gently along every single line that I've made. This is gonna make it easier to fold and give me a little bit more of a smooth geometric shape that's gonna be a little bit easier for folding and just make it a little bit easier altogether to work with. So you wanna be very gentle and apply a very small amount of pressure, just enough to cut this upper layer of cardboard. And again, safety first, be careful with box cutters. Don't cut towards yourself like what I'm doing. Do as I say, not as I do. Except for when it comes to building these holsters and then do exactly what I say. We're gonna fold it over now. This is what the shape's gonna look like. And you can see it's a little tight, but it'll give us a really smooth pull. It's very flush with the bottom. And once we cover this in tape, it's gonna look great. If you don't have a ton of tape, you can just cover the outside, but I prefer to cover the inside and the outside because it makes it more waterproof and it makes it just hold up a little bit longer. So using the same technique we used with the throwing knives, we're gonna cover up a little bit excess the entire way around, and we're gonna splice it on those long edges. And if you take your time, you can get these wrinkles out, so that way you'll get a very smooth finish. And I am putting just a little bit of overlap in these, just to give it, again, a little bit more strength, 
a little bit more integrity and less chance for water to be able to get through or sweat or any other bodily fluid which you may experience while nerfing. Now this is mostly set up so that we can use this on a belt. However, I have done these in the past with custom ordered molly straps so this will work for pals webbing like you see on combat gear. We're gonna flip this over and I'm gonna make my little splice marks. I'm gonna do these at about a 45 degree angle relative to each corner and just very carefully fold this over. I've been making holsters like this since my freshman year and I've actually got some holsters from my freshman year which are still usable, still held up, and uh, yeah, they still work. So this is definitely a very durable way of doing things as long as you take your time and use good materials and be sure, most importantly, to cover the inside and the outside because that's the really big difference on if something's going to last well or not. We've played in all kinds of environments so it's really nice to have that extra waterproofing. And again, I'm going to cover a little bit extra on the top and bottom and both sides. If you don't quite have the resources or if you run out of tape, you don't have to cover the inside, but again, I do. You can use this exact same method for using for a blaster holster or anything else you want to do. Again, just use that same basic concept where you do the front, the back, and both sides and one long side for an overlap. You can definitely use multiple colors of tape. You kind of do something fun. I'm just using silver because I have a ton of it. So now we're gonna bend it again so we can try to find those creases that we made earlier. They shouldn't be too terribly hard to find. And as we can see, it's a little tight, but give it some time and this should work pretty well. Now what we're doing on the other side is we're gonna add our strappings. I'm gonna cut two pieces out to be about four to five inches long. The average belt is gonna be an inch and a half to two inches. So we're gonna make it wide enough to easily accommodate both with a little bit extra on top to attach by. I'm just using my lighter to melt the edges on this. Uh, be very careful because this plastic will bubble off sometimes and can burn you. So just be careful about that. If you're using a cloth, you will not need to melt the edges. This is only for synthetic material like this. So what I'm doing is you can see our panel right here along this line and this line. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it just about a half inch in from each side and give it a glob of goo and a glob of glue and a glob of goo and a glob of glue and yes i did say that differently each time little easter eggs for you little little neat little things there and i'm going to reinforce this with the duct tape Honestly, the glue is probably more than adequate, but the duct tape's there just for moral support. It's cheering it on. It's giving it the get well soon cards. And we're gonna let that dry and cool off. I'm gonna put this little splash of color on this because we can. I've seen some people do uh, little decals and stickers and all kinds of fancy things. You can definitely do something like that. I'm not gonna be doing that in this video, but you can definitely kind of improve upon that method. All right, I'm gonna be adding just a splash of color to this, um, just to dress it up just a little bit, make it a little bit more fun. I'm gonna put a little bit of color on these shorter sides just to make it a little more eye-catching. And again, I'm using that same technique where I'm going a little bit long on either side, and I'm doing both the inside and the outside just for a little bit more strength and give it a little bit more attachment point the entire way around. A lot of my gear for a long time before I had my rig was made with duct tape and I used lime green stuff because, well, that was my ninja color because I'm in Ninja Squad and we all have our own little color because we're a bunch of rainbow powered nerf players. And we're going to add our hot glue onto this. There's sometimes where people will say less is more, but in this case, more is more. Now I am putting the magazine inside of this when I'm gluing this shut just so I can be sure I'm not making it too tight or compressing it too much. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a long piece of duct tape and stick it through so I can wrap around this entire area. And I'm gonna use a little bit of my extra webbing as a guide so I can pull this duct tape through. You don't need to do this. Um, this just adds a little bit more support and stability to it. The webbing is not necessary, but it definitely makes your life easier. 10 out of 10, would recommend. And giving our smooth, crisp, straight lines, pulling that very tight and pulling that back down. And that gave it just a little bit of extra support and stability. So lastly, I'm gonna make that duct tape bottom like I was telling you guys about. Um, I just took two smaller pieces of duct tape, I taped them back to back, and I'm just gonna add a little dab of glue to either side of what's going to eventually be my bottom. And you might think, but that's not a very strong way of doing that. Well, that's why we're gonna reinforce it. But good on you for being so observant. 
You can make this a little tight, you can make this a little loose, whatever you really want to do. Nerf is what you make it. You can definitely use a different color for this. I may have ran out of my other colors twice. All right, so here it is, it's holding on my belt. It's pretty secure, it's not going anywhere. I can jump around, the magazine's not gonna fall out, but it's loose enough where I can pull it out pretty quickly. I can put it back in pretty easily. That's not giving me any problems. And I can just load my magazine. And I'm good to go. All right, guys. Rob has said that he's going to be willing to sell this on eBay to go towards the Thunderdome project and bettering our community. I don't know why anyone would want something that I signed, but he told me to sign it, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And he's going to include the 18 mag, this awesome holster. It's going to fit on your belt really well. It'll be up on eBay. Links below. Thanks for watching, YouTube. Hopefully you learned something today.